get a rock and here with Embark Studios recently announcing that their upcoming free to play game Ark Raiders is being switched to a PvPVE extraction shooter and a few comments appearing from the current Ark Raiders community saying things like there are too many extraction shooters already. I figure this is a good opportunity to look at the extraction shooter genre as a whole showing you all the extraction shooters that are either available to play right now or are upcoming and looking at what separates them or what they have in common and giving you an understanding of whether the genre is really oversaturated with these types of games and whether there is even space for a game like Art Creators to be successful. Now that's quite a lot to look at in one video which is why I'm dividing this into a series with this being part one where I'll give you a super short introduction to all 27 extraction shooters that I've been able to find whether they've already been released or are currently in development. The next video in the series will jump into the comparisons between them. So even if you're not concerned about where Ark Raiders fits into the extraction shooter genre, this video alone will provide you with a bunch of extraction shooters to check out. All the info I'm about to run through now and in subsequent videos on extraction shooters I've compiled into this spreadsheet, a link for which is in the video description below. The spreadsheet includes links to the game's websites, their Twitter profiles, links to some videos from content creators about them and so on, so feel free to dive into that if you want more info about any of the games. And if you're a content creator you're welcome to use the spreadsheet for your own research a shout out is appreciated if you use the info as the basis for any video you make as it took a lot of time and effort to pull all the info together and the spreadsheet includes a lot more info than I'll run through in this video series. Okay let's start with as complete a list of extraction shooters as we can whether they've been released or are still in some stage of pre-release development. Firstly though, what defines an extraction shooter? Well it can't simply be the ability to extract loot out of a map because then games like DayZ or Scum where you take loot with you when you log out would be considered extraction shooters. And maybe that's a broader discussion that could be had but for the purposes of this video I think an extraction shooter has to be a game where you extract gear out of the map and the extraction process should put you under some sort of pressure where the loot is at risk from other players, the environment or from the time allocated to you to be able to extract or a mixture of those. Additionally, once out of the map, you can usually organize or buy and sell loot either in the game menu or from a hideout of some kind. Now, could that description include, for instance, a Battle Royale game? Well, I think potentially it can because the closing circle of a Battle Royale definitely puts pressure on you, so you might lose your loot that way, but so long as when you leave the game, either by extracting early or by winning the classic Battle Royale scenario, you're able to take loot with you and you can interact with it outside the playing space space like I mentioned before, so trade it or customise it and then take it back into the game with you. So with that definition out of the way, let's have a drum roll please. I present to you the 27 games making up the Extraction Shooter class of 23. Thank you class, settle down please. Okay class, uh wait a second, there are only 26 of you here, who's missing? Ah, Hazard Zone. How good of you to finally join us. Sorry, you have something you want to say? No, I didn't think so. And we wouldn't want to spoil any of that goodwill that's been built up over the last month, would we now? Okay class, now that you're all here, we're going to introduce each of you to the viewers. Let's start by dividing you up into two groups. If you're a game that has been released or are in full time early access, please turn green and move to the left. And if you're a game that's in development or only at the scheduled playtest stage, please move to the right. Hazard Zone, what are you doing? Okay. Just because almost no one is playing you doesn't mean you're not playable. Get green and left buddy. Now that we have you separated I'm going to take a moment to introduce each of you to the viewers. Let's start with the 11 games you can play now in alphabetical order. Badlanders is a free to play PvPVE mobile style first and third person shooter set in the near future. You can play solo or co-op in the game, it's available for mobile and PC and is currently in early access. 
Battlefield 2042's Hazard Zone mode is a PvPVE first person shooter that allows you to play solo or in squads of up to four players. The mode is set in, surprise surprise, 2042 and comes as part of the full Battlefield 2042 game which was released in November 2021 for PC, Xbox and PlayStation. You can generally pick up Battlefield 2042 for around 30 US dollars or gain access to it via EA Play for around five bucks a month. Unfortunately, new content for the mode ceased being being developed in May 2022 after it received a poor reception from players. Similar to Hazard Zone, Call of Duty's DMZ mode is a PvPVE first person shooter with a modern setting, which comes as part of the free to play Warzone 2.0, which was released in November 2022 for PC and consoles. In DMZ you can play solo or in a squad of up to three players, however you can also increase your squad size up to a maximum of six players by inviting others in game. Deep Rock Galactic is a well-received PvE first-person arcade co-op shooter set in the caves of an alien planet where you mine resources in teams of up to four players while defending yourself against alien bugs that attack you individually or in swarms. The game was released in May 2020 and can be purchased for $10 to $20 depending on sales. Escape from Tarkov, often seen as the original extraction shooter, is a realistic PvPVE first-person shooter for PC. Set in Russia in 2028, the game allows you to play solo or in squads of up to five players. You can also play as your player character or PMC with your own gear, or as a scav where you get given random gear when you drop into the raid. Escape from Tarkov is currently in open beta, but has had some mixed publicity recently with cheating issues and also some changes the developers made that haven't been received well by the community. Pricing for the game ranges from around 35 to 110 euro depending on the version you buy. The more costly versions provide you with more space in your stash to store gear between raids. Ghosts of Tabor is a VR first person shooter set in 2044 with separate PvP and PvE modes. You can play the game solo or in squads of up to three players and it is currently in early access at a price of $20. Hunt Showdown is a first person PvPVE shooter with fantasy elements. The game is set in the Louisiana Bayou in 1895 with period piece weaponry and includes fights against AI bosses. You can play Hunt Showdown solo or in squads of up to three. It fully released for PC, Xbox and PlayStation in August 2019 with a full price of $40 but can be found on sale for as little as $16. Marauders is a first person PvPVE shooter which takes place in space bases and the space near them which you can travel through in your spaceship and where you also have the opportunity to breach the ships of player enemies and attack them while they're in transit to and from the space spaces. In Marauders you play in squads of up to four and the game was released to early access on PC in October 2022 at a price of $30. Shadowline is a free to play first person PvE extraction shooter although the game also includes a PvP arena shooter with several play modes as well. The game is set in 2044 and you can play in teams of up to three players. Shadowline was released to early access for PC and PlayStation in September 2022. The Cycle Frontier is a free to play first person PvPVE arcade shooter for PC set in a space station in a future where interstellar space travel is possible. The maps in the game are persistent so you can drop in and extract at any time except when there's a periodic storm on the planet's surface. You can play in squads of up to three but you will only ever be matched against teams of the same size as you. So as a solo you won't ever face a squad of three for instance. The Cycle Frontier has had some poor publicity recently when the developers ran a competition for content creators who were following the game but then excluded the game's most popular content creator from entry. Vigor is a free to play third person PvP looter shooter set in post war Norway. The game is available for Xbox, Nintendo and Playstation but not PC. Content creator Jack Frags has described the game as the love child of Daisy and Escape from Tarkov and used the moniker Baby's First Tarkov for the game. In Vigor you play in squads of up to 3 with up to 12 players in a server. You have to extract back to your base before radiation in the world kills you. The game features a maximum frame rate of 30 FPS which can make gunplay which has a pretty fast TTK pretty jarring. So that's the 11 extraction shooters that are available to play now. Next we move on to the 16 games that are currently in development. Hello? Ah, Rock Dog. Are you at your beach house that looked like it owned by Taylor Swift? 
Yes. Now, have you found the flamingo again? Ah, I track it from Seoul City in the Korea to Monaco uh, near some French city. Nice. You would have been able to use my car parked at the airport there. Ah, I use. And where did you locate the bird in Monaco? Bird was dining al fresco. Here, I send photo now. Excellent. And did you capture the bird this time? Ah, I captured a bird. Fantastic. Where's the bird now? Well, I let bird drive your car. You what? Police took photo just before bird stopped driving. Here, I send photo now. Police? Then bird park car. Here, I send photo now. Ah. I'm very sorry, rock dog. Bird got parking ticket. 35 euro. I will pay for you. Uh, thanks. Well, at least you're okay. And the back wheel is still round. That's a positive, I suppose. What about the bird? Bird get into another car and how you say, flee the scene. Here, I send photo now. What the- Bird drive towards airport. Bird very fast. I will follow, but maybe not at 200 miles per hour. Yeah, good idea. Anyhow, as I was saying, now we move on to the 16 extraction shooters that are currently in development. Arc Raiders is, of course, a free-to-play third-person PvPVE extraction shooter being developed by Embark Studios. The game is set in a world where Arc, AI-driven alien robotic craft, descend from the skies to attack raiders who are the remaining humans on Earth. The game is approaching its first closed alpha playtest with a date for that yet to be announced. Ascendant is a PC-only first-person PvP game with some light PvE added in. It's set on what is described as a ruthless feral planet, and players work in teams of three to extract resources from procedurally generated maps within a round time of 30 minutes. The game is currently working through a series of pre-alpha playtests. I didn't see any details about the expected price for Ascendants though. Dark and Darker is a first-person PvPVE medieval dungeon game where you can play solo or in squads of up to three and you're forced into combat through a battle royale style ring of hideous bugs that closes throughout the dungeon. You can then extract via portals or also use other portals to go deeper into the dungeons where you face tougher environmental enemies. The game has been at the alpha playtest stage but Dark and Darker's developers Iron Mace are currently embroiled in a legal dispute with Embark Studio owner Nexon over intellectual property for the game. If you want to know more about that court case, I suggest you check out content creator OnePeg's channel as he's covering it in depth. If Iron Mace ends up releasing the game, they're apparently aiming for a $30 to $40 price point. Dead Drop is a free-to-play first-person PvPVE vertical extraction shooter with a strong battle royale aspect as the game set in a modern but parallel universe and you play in a tower that has what is known as the Freeze rising up through it. The Freeze forces players toward the top of the building and into engagements as they move and at the top of the tower you can either extract early or choose to try and eliminate all the other players aiming for a full victory. Dead Drop is notably being developed by a studio co-founded by Dr. Disrespect and is at pre-alpha stage. Hawked is a free-to-play third-person PvPVE shooter on PC and console set on X Isle, a mysterious island that harbors powerful artifacts from a lost civilization. In a team of up to three, you play in a round with up to 30 players in total, and the game is currently at closed alpha. Hyenas is a first-person PvEVP, and by PvEVP, I mean that 90% of the time you're fighting AI enemies and 10% against other players. The game has a sci-fi setting and there are five teams of three players in each round. Pricing for the game is unknown, but the developers say they have no plans to make it free to play. The gaming community's reception to the art and play style of the game when it was announced was mixed at best, as many comments were describing it as an unwanted generic shooter. Marathon is a freshly announced game from Bungie, with them reviving the Marathon game name from the late 1990s. The game, which has attracted a lot of community interest, is likely to be a first-person PvP shooter and is set in 2850 on the lost colony of Tau City 4. You'll play solo or in crews of three, and with the developers mentioning persistency in the game, a match timer seems unlikely. Bungie have said the game is nearing alpha level, but also that they are now going dark for an extended period, so no release date has been announced. 
Attracting similar community excitement, developer Naughty Dog announced that they are working on a third-person PvP extraction shooter game that lies within the Last of Us universe, specifically set in San Francisco. The game, which will probably be for PC and PlayStation, has been in development for a little under three years, and Naughty Dog recently announced that they want to give the game more time for development. Off the Grid is a third-person cyberpunk-styled PvPVE shooter that its maker Godzilla Games, a studio of over 200 developers, describes as a AAA game that will redefine battle royales. Godzilla aimed to release the game in 2023. Off the Grid will have squads of up to three with 150 players per match, which takes place on a dystopian tropical island. Godzilla Games notably includes District 9 and Elysium movie director Neil Bloomcamp as their chief visionary officer, and his film style seems to be making its way into the game from footage that the studio has very recently released, albeit what appears to be an extended cutscene. An interesting and almost certainly divisive aspect of Off the Grid is that players will be able to sell items they pick up in game, such as weapons, scopes and other weapon modifications like barrels and skins, as well as their characters' mechanical limbs, to other players for real world money via a blockchain. This is something I'll discuss more later in the series when I look at community sentiment for the games, because I definitely have some concerns about how Godzilla games are approaching this new in-game economy, but for the moment let's move on. Project Nakwon is a third-person PvPVE game set in a dystopian Korean city. With an art style that looks a bit like Escape from Tarkov, the game's teaser video, which seems to be hurriedly compiled from a varying range of game builds, shows two players working together, so it may be a co-op game. It also appears to include zombies as an AI enemy. The game is at pre-alpha stage and is being developed by Mint Rocket, which is a sub-brand of Embark Studios owner Nexon. Project Beautiful Light is a first-person PvP, VP and E game set in a hostile, horrific environment in the year 2036. What do I mean by PvP, VP and E, you ask? Well, I've kind of made that term up, but for the purposes of this, it means that as well as playing against players and ghost-like AI enemies that are known as anomalies, when players get eliminated, they'll be able to take control of anomalies themselves and continue participating in the game as if they were part of the environment. It's a novel concept. Project Beautiful Light is aiming for early access in 2024 with a price point of around $27 and is currently going through playtests and there have been a few content creator streams showing the playtests. Project Black Budget is being developed by PUBG Studios as their follow-on from the mega-successful PUBG Battlegrounds. Very little is known about the game other than that the publisher Crafton is considering a launch to PC, console and mobile and that the game is possibly going to be PvPVE and likely to be a AAA title. Its pricing is unknown. Rainbow Six Extraction is an odd one in this bunch of unreleased games because it was actually originally released in January 2022 but wasn't well supported by its developer Ubisoft and is now strangely being re-released in mid-June, just a few days away, despite significant negative sentiment about the game from its community. The game is an FPS PvE shooter with 1-3 to three players playing in co-op against aliens and pricing for the game has yet to be shown. Shrapnel is a first-person PvP game set in the year 2038 and is likely to be PC only, with its pricing not yet known. It's described on its website as the first blockchain-enabled competitive multiplayer first-person shooter. Shrapnel is bundled with a rich set of player creation tools combining combat, creation, curation and connection into a community where players own the platform and decide its future. The game's roadmap currently has no dates and the gunplay shown by the developers looks pretty clunky. Star Siege Dead Zone is a first-person PvPVE game set in space station interiors where you play solo or in squads of up to three with a total of 24 players. The game is described by its developer Prophecy Games as a high-tension corridor extraction shooter and is currently working through scheduled alpha playtests on PC, although console versions are planned as well. The developers also plan to release a sister game, Star Siege Raiders, which they describe as a large-scale out or extraction shooter that is coming in November 2023. Pricing is not yet known for either of the games. Lastly, the Division Heartlands name should be familiar as it's part of Ubisoft's family of Division games. 
Heartland will be a dual mode third person PvPVE and PvE shooter and as its name alludes is set in rural America around the fictional town of Silver Creek. Of the game's two featured modes the first is called Storm Operations which is a player versus player versus environment mode that can support a maximum of 45 players. In this mode players must fend off agents from rogue factions known as vultures while surviving a virus. The second mode is named Excursion Operations, a player versus environment mode in which players can complete missions and collect loot and gear. At launch the game will feature three character classes, a weapons expert, a medic and a survivalist, and six playable characters. The Division Heartland includes survival elements and a day-night cycle and a closed beta for the game is expected soon. So that introduces you to the extraction shooters that you can play now as well as those that are still in development. In the next video in this series I'll look at how the games compare to one another so we can understand the competition Arc Raiders will face when it releases so hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss that. If you want more details on any of the 27 games shown jump into that spreadsheet linked in the video description below. If you found this video helpful please consider sharing it with your like-minded friends. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Kia kaha, stay strong. Everybody knows the world ain't right Down on your knees Get up and fight